Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, in the last unit we looked at how the western scholars uh, along with artists, painters, writers, uh, philosophers constructed a discourse about the east uh, which we call the Ori uh, which they call the orient and this discourse which went under the name of orientalism uh, created an image of India and the East in the mind of the West, which was a construction of the West and was used by the West to define itself. In this unit, we look at uh, the, sec the later phase, the 20th century phase, when uh, there was an extraordinary interest in India. Uh, this India which was constructed as a mys mystical spiritual uh, entity uh, became the object of uh, the West's desire in various waves and we begin with after having explained how this interest uh, began with the Indologists, let's look at the various waves of the Western interest in India which converged on Indian spirituality, meditation and yoga beginning in the 1920s. So we look at yoga, meditation and the gurus and how this myth of Indian spirituality and India as a mystical spiritual nation was uh, fed into the Western imaginary through the popularity to the visits and the cult that cult following that many of the gurus enjoyed beginning in the 1920s which also began a cult for yoga. So we begin in 1920s with Paramahans Yogananda. In 20, 1920 Param, Paramahans Yogananda came to address a conference of religious liberals in Boston. He had been sent by his guru the ageless Babaji to spread the message of Kriya Yoga to the West. I am not going into the earlier visits uh, of uh, spiritual leaders such as Swami Vivekananda and others prior to this because uh, this cult began, began in the 20th century and a cult for gurus and meditation and yoga where a number of uh, genuine and fake gurus became the object of the West's interest. Although his early works had uncompromising titles like Recharging Your Business Battery Out of the Cosmos, his 1946 autobiography of a yogi, Self-Realization Fellowship remains a spiritual classic. And in 1920, it was a Western woman, uh, Indira Devi, who opened a yoga studio in Hollywood. And her three popular books had housewives from New Jersey to Texas standing on their heads in their bedrooms. So she was the one who created this cult for yoga. She was the first Westerner to study with Sri Krishna, Krishna Macharya and the first to bring his lineage to the West. He went on to become the grandfather of American yoga. His students included B.K.S. Iyengar. Pata B. Joyce and T. K. V. Desi Kachar. What I am trying to show is that this interest in, um, I focus on yoga and um, meditation and interest in the gurus, particularly on the yoga to show how this interest in India focused on the practice of yoga and the following of gurus, uh, occult followings. Um, which used yoga as a practice to reach a higher state of being. The person who introduced more Americans to yoga than any other was Richard Mitt Mittelman, who in 1950, so we come to the 50s, who in 50 returned from studies in India to teach yoga in New York. 
Now, Whittleman not only sold millions of copies of his books and pioneered yoga on television in 1961, but he influenced how yoga has been taught ever since. In 50s, we also have the emergence of Mahar, uh, Ramana Maharishi uh, 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 because of the because of um, uh, Middleton's uh, being a disciple, Hittleman's being the disciple of Ramana Maharishi. We have an interest arising in Ramana Maharishi, um, very much who was very much a spiritual yogi. He now, Middleman is uh, Hittleman is the first person to have dis disengaged yoga, which is part of Indian spiritual practices and not a sport or an exercise. Hittleman was the first person to have di disengaged the spiritual practice from the physical aspect in yoga and uh, yogic uh, asanas and yogic practices. So, he was the one who presented a non-religious yoga for the American mainstream with an emphasis on its physical benefits. And this is the stream of yoga which has become, uh, the, these two streams have become separated ever since and today a number of people in the west uh, are die hard fans of yoga as an exercise, as a physical activity having dissociated it from its spiritual aspects. He hoped students would then be motivated to learn yoga, philosophy and meditation. In 1958, Indian born Swami Vishnu Devananda, a disciple of Swami Shivanand Saraswati, arrived in San Francisco sponsored by the artist Peter Max. His 1960 book, The Complete Illustrated Book of Yoga, became an essential guidebook for many practitioners. Dubbed by a colleague as a man with a push, he founded the Shivananda Yoga Vedanta Centers, headquartered in Montreal, one of the largest networks of yoga schools in the West. So, we can see how yoga and meditation spreads to all parts of the West, uh, not just in North America, uh, US, as well as Canada, and the 60s. Uh, we find um, Swami Sachidananda, another one of Swami Shivananda's disciples, arriving in New York for a couple of days and ended up staying there permanently. His integral yoga institute now includes an ashram in rural Virginia and over 40 branches worldwide. Sachidananda opened the Woodstock Festival in 1969 evoking Vivekananda's greeting of 75 years earlier. My beloved sisters and brothers, looking like an aging hippie himself with flowing hair and beard, he provided a living example of a life dedicated to spirit. It was just what many young people were hungering for. And now from the 20s, we come to the 60s wave when there's a crescendo and uh, with the arrival of Ram Das, another Pied Piper for American youth, the former Harvard professor left on a pilgrimage to India in the late 60s as Richard Alpert, he returned with a guru and a new identity. Now, his 1970 tour of college campuses and his book, Be Here, now established the spiritual quest as a lifestyle for a new generation of seekers. So, we are talking about the 60s wave and the western turn to East eastern mysticism and spirituality as a panacea for all western evils. Uh, in 66, B. K. S. Iyengar's Light on Yoga was published in the United States, a book that is still considered to be the bible of serious asana practice. In 1973, Mr. Iyengar was invited to Ann Arbor, Michigan to teach by Mary Palmer. Nearly every Western teacher has been influenced by his ana emphasis on anatomical uh, precision, many without even knowing it. And by the 70s, you would find 
yoga and spiritual teachings everywhere near Santa Cruz, California, the silent sage Baba Haridas found, founded Mount Madonna to provide residential yoga programs. In 1975, Patabi Joyce made his first visit to the United States and set off the wildfire of Ashtang Vinayas, Vinayas Yoga. Around the same time, TKV Desikachar, son of the great master Sri Krishna Macharya, brought his Vini Yoga to the West. So, we have a mushrooming of various yoga institutes and uh, gurus, yoga practitioners who, in, who are uh, lapped up by a West waiting for a messiah to solve their spiritual problems. And then we come to Maharishi, Mahari Mahesh Yogi, who has been the most influential guru in the 60s. Uh, and who is responsible for the explosion of meditation and yoga across America in the early 60s when an unassuming looking guru yogi came out of the Himalayas to spiritually generate the world. Now, the, his historic meeting with the Beatles is, is what set off the trend or a fad for Hinduism amongst uh, Western youth. Uh, largely owing to the popularity of Beatles in the 60s, a large number of youth turned to Hinduism and Hindu spirituality, Indian spirituality in order to get away from the problems of the Western world. Once dismissed as hippie mysticism, the Hindu practice of mind control that Maharishi taught gradually gained medical respectability. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi began teaching transcendental meditation in 1955 and brought the technique in the, to the United States in 1959. But the movement really took off after the Beatles visited his ashram in India in 1968. So, we have here Beatles sitting at the Maharishi's feet and we have a picture of uh, the, the film star Mia Farrow as well. Once there, the rock stars had a falling out with the Maharishi after rumors emerged that he was making inappropriate advances on attendee Mia Farrow. John Lennon was so angry that he wrote a bit of satire, sexy sadi, in which he vowed that the Maharishi would get yours yet. So, the Maha Maharishi insisted he had done nothing wrong and years later, Paul Mc McCartney agreed with him. Deepak Chopra uh, the new age guru as you know him, a uh, disciple of the Maharishis and a friend of George Harrison's has disputed the Pharaoh story saying that the Maharishi had become unhappy with the Beatles because they were using drugs. With the help of celebrity endorsements, the Maharishi, a Hindi language title for the great seer, parlayed his interpretations of ancient scripture into a multi-million global empire. So, we can see here that this cult for the East which is created in the West first by Indologists and Orientalists and these forms of Neo Orientalism circulate in the Western world with uh, the East itself, not only the nationalist leaders, uh, but also the, the, the purveyors of Eastern mysticism and uh, philosophy themselves pandering to this uh, taste for the East in the West, for the desire of the East in the West and using it, appropriating this uh, desire of, of the uh, West for the, uh, of the East in the West to uh, capitalizing on, in, in it, on it to create a multi, multi million dollar global empire. Transcendental meditation after 50 years of teaching the Maharishi turned to larger themes with grand designs to harness the power of group meditation to create world peace and to mobilize his devote devotees to banish poverty from the earth. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi's transcendental meditation empire now claims 40,000 teachers and more than 4 million practitioners with 1200 centers in 108 countries. So, now we come to 60s counterculture and uh, this the role of this, this counterculture in creating a, a taste of fashion for the East and the West 
a trend for the East, a cult, uh, fad for the East, which persists, which is carried over today in the era of globalization. In some ways, the spirit of 60s counterculture has made us resurgence today. We have arguably returned to a time when many are questioning the values, this is what somebody says, the value of our relentless pursuit of success, asking whether our hard driving lifestyles are causing us to miss out on some of the most important things in life. And yoga, meditation and spiritua spirituality, interest in yoga, meditation and in Eastern spirituality, which were all originally popularized in the West during the 60s, have also peaked in recent years, becoming ingrained in Western cultural lexicon and American lifestyles. So, e key strategy in creating global religious practices is to decontextualize them from their religious context and worldviews. And it has been a noted feature of Asian religions to create universal and decontextualized global practices. Yoga techniques and various kinds of meditation have become entangled in multiple fields that are related to secular, religious, spiritual, health and well-being. And through aligning with a proliferation of modern discourses, decontextualized religious practices create opportunities for global participation and make claims towards modernity. The decontextualization and subsequent process of recontextualization enters new discursive fields, creating new relationships and dialogues. Now, these practices are now disembedded from their framework and made anew, seemingly independent and able to be inserted into a diversity of traditional and modern settings. These processes demonstrate the first particular ways that Asian religions in dialogue with global discourses reinterpret and translate themselves into non-Asian cultures. So, to summarize what I have said, I have looked at how I focused on, uh, focused on yoga to show how uh, uh, interest in India, Indian religious practices and spirituality including yoga and meditation uh, and Hinduism itself has um, uh, has been uh, prevalent since the turn of the century in the west since the 20s and there have been subsequent waves once in the 20s then in the 60s and now in the 90s uh, and these waves show how indian uh, spiritual or indian or asian spiritual practices are now uh, uh, are disengaged from the original context, they are decontextualized from their original originary context where yoga and meditation was an aid to mystical was a part of a mystical Hindu mystical practices and the objective of these practices was to attain uh, a, 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 a higher understanding. Now, these practices are being used increasingly in the west. Uh, decoupled from the originary context, deterritorialized, they have been used um, uh, as stress bursters, as forms of physical activity, uh, uh, as uh, as aid for improving concentration, and um, as as again finally as also an answer to the problems of the West. So once again, uh, as in the past, the East the orient uh, converging on yoga, meditation and gurus with the complicity of the gurus uh, who, who did not hesitate to capitalize on this fad for India and the West. Uh, the, uh, the West, uh, not, uh, not just North America, but also Europe has again created this orient, a spiritual mystical orient to answer its own needs.